The existing viaduct was originally built in the early 1960s. The viaduct has deteriorated over the years and requires frequent maintenance. Due to the rising cost of the maintenance and the delays it causes to the traffic, it was decided to replace the viaduct with a new one. Here we are on the site of the Wolvercut Viaduct replacement. The bridge behind me is part of the A34 and will be repositioned by 15 metres on a slide-in track. Good morning, I'm here with Darren Dobson, the project manager, who's going to tell us a little bit about what this project is all about. Over to you Darren, and can you tell us why you're doing it? Yes Brian, well what we're doing here is replacing the existing structure that was built in 1961 and uh, due to uh, joints at every single peel location and salt laden water uh, unfortunately the existing structure was deteriorating so we've decided to or the high residency our client has decided to uh, replace the viaducts and to do this we've got to limit the disruption to the road users now bearing that in mind we've come up with quite a clever idea on how we're going to do that and that is to basically build an offline bridge which is the one you see closest to us we can then traffic that that enables us to take the traffic off the existing northbound bridge we can demolish it and rebuild it mm. then once that's rebuilt we can put the traffic on there and demolish the old southbound bridge and then we build a substructure up but rather than build a third deck what we do is we slide this deck you see behind us here over into a sideways into an online position in one night shift and that then enables us one to reduce the time that we're here on site two to save taxpayers money and um, of course to um, to reduce the, the disruption to the road users how much is all this going to cost us um, the total cost of the scheme is 44 million uh, the actual construction cost is £36 million. Pounds. And how long is the project to take? Well, the project is what we call an early contractor involvement scheme. So we've been working with the highways agency two years before we actually started on site. Um, and then we have a construction time of just over two and a half, just two and a half years. Pretty good. So it's four and a half years from start to completion. Uh, can I ask you, how is the bridge deck going to be moved? Well, the bridge deck is 250 metres long and it weighs 5,000 tonne, 11 metres wide and we're going to slide it sideways uh, about 16 metres from its offline position to its online position mm -hmm. and we do that by installing slide tracks which have a low friction mm -hmm. uh, along with some hydraulic rams. Now we put these slide tracks and jacks at eight locations, six locations at the at the pier tops that you can see behind us there yeah. uh, and at each abutment that's the south abutment and the north abutment and what we do is we push at all eight locations at the same time at the same rate marvelous and how long will that move take the actual slide itself is uh, particularly to take three hours that's from start to completion but the uh, the night works obviously includes Prior to that, jacking the bridge up, taking out some an infill deck mm -hmm. and doing some parapet works, an expansion joint, because of course we have to retract the expansion joints before we can slide. Marvellous. And this has only been done once before I understand? Or I'm twice? aware of it being done twice before in, in this country. Uh, the first time was at Marsh Mills, uh, which is in Plymouth in 1996. Um, since then there's been a, a very small sideways uh, move bridge in North Devon um, but not nowhere near the scale of this project. So uh, this is things that you've had to overcome in building this? Well these viaducts span over the A40 uh, mm -hmm. which has also got pedestrian and, and footways. Um, we've got a pedestrian cycle route below the bridge here. Mm -hmm. We have the, the canal, the Oxford Canal mm -hmm. Beyond that we have the Birmingham-Oxford railway lines mm -hmm. and then to the south part of the bridge we've got the Thames floodplain. So throughout the project we've been working very hard at maintaining them routes and limiting disruption to the road users. And that's, in, that's meant 
putting in this the canal bridge that you can see there, yeah. uh, yeah. which is a, a lift bridge. Yes, yeah. a little uh, clever design, but again can be raised and lowered in 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 five to ten minutes, such that we limit the disruption to the canal users. We've always maintained the cycle way throughout the scheme, even though we've had to realign it as and when the works uh, has been going on going on and as for the railway line we haven't specifically asked for any possessions other than what is already in place for maintenance works so we piggyback the maintenance possessions so on the night of the actual move everything's supposed to stop hasn't it i mean you've got to shut the road you've got to shut the canal shut the railway and most of all you've got to shut the a40 as well well again to limit disruption We'll be keeping the A34 northbound open to traffic, mm. and we send the southbound uh, traffic off the A34 around the Oxford Ring Road. Mm. Um, in the unlikely event that we overrun, we can contraflow on the northbound, so we can yeah. keep one lane open in each direction on the A34. So that's our contingency plan. On the A40, we can actually keep one lane open on the A40, so we don't have to close it to traffic. We'll put a traffic light system out, mm. and over night time, that's sufficient to allow people uh, through the traffic flows that we experience in the night time. Mm. As for the canal, we'll be keeping the, keeping the canal open. Fortunately, it doesn't get used in the night time, but should somebody want to get through, <laughs> yeah. we can let them through. Like you have a canoeist at midnight or something like that. If we do, we can let them through. <laughs> um, yeah. And the same with the cycleway and footpath, we won't be closing them on the night of the slide. Mm. So again, it's all about limiting disruption to, to, to the, to the travelling public, and that's what we've been doing. So you've moved the bridge, it's all flowing happily, so what follows after that then? Once the bridge is in its online position, uh, we'll then be putting out some movable barrier onto the bridge deck. Mm -hmm. And what we then do is we stitch the two decks together. Mm -hmm. uh, this requires a, a, a nighttime paw, uh, which is the full length of the bridge, 250 metres, and about 2 metres wide. Once that paw's done, we can then surface that top area, put in the central barrier, mm -hmm. and then we're good to take off the traffic management, put the speed limit back to 70 mile an hour and move on to our next job. I mean, from a very early stage, we've been working closely with the environmental team, uh, Chris Banford's associates, uh, to identify um, the environmental constraints mm. and the impact that we have on the environment. And we've been working very hard to limit that impact mm. and improve uh, mm. where possible. And one area that we have done is we've taken out an uh, ancient hedgerow from this area just down yes, to uh, our, our right here. Down. And what we've done is we planted it uh, on another area of the site and actually it, it, it grew yeah. and then we replaced it. So we're actually going to be leaving that hedgerow in a, a very similar condition to how we found it when we first arrived. And that pleases the conservationists, I'm sure. It does, absolutely. Uh, and all areas where we've had marshland will replace the Great Two Listed uh, Tilt Bridge. We, we've ensured we haven't damaged that and that will be in the same condition uh, after the job as it was before we started the job. So when you eventually leave the site, no one will have known you've been here. That's certainly the plan. We'll be uh, reseeding and yeah. planting uh, landscaping. So you'll see a new bridge, yeah. some new trees uh, and some new grass. Yeah. And hopefully that's it. Your main contractor is Costain? Yes, I work for Costain and we're the main contractor for the scheme. Our client is the Highways Agency, but we obviously we have a team of, of partners around us. Yeah. Uh, that includes Jacobs, who are our design mm -hmm. engineers. We also have our slide specialist, which is Dom and Long Technology. We have a attendance uh, supply chain, which is maybe Bridge, and they also um, fabricate and erected the steel beams in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the team that we have around us on the night of the slide. And that'll equate to uh, probably about just over 100 people on the night. And that's all controlled from one source to yeah, just give instructions? Yeah, we have a, a very uh, strict chain of command as you can imagine yeah. that needs to be followed to ensure that the operation goes to plan yeah. um, and I'll be in charge of operations on the night with a support team around me. Well I think we've uh, learned a lot from you now. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time and hopefully everything goes exactly as it goes.
now join the viaduct on the night that it will be lifted 70 millimeters. Jacking up operation, the trial effectively to ensure that on the night we don't have any particular problems. Um, if we left it all to the night of the actual slide, it could find problems. And now tonight, hopefully, we'll well, definitely. But if we do, we'll be addressed for the next two weeks. There is no need. We can pack them and make sure they go. But you can you get a fairly good picture of the jacks or, or the support trellis work on the red on the on the next one. I don't see the light on the right. Side. To record the exact height as the bridge is lifted, the surveyors use an electronic theodolite which accurately measures its lift. It's good way of monitoring it as well. Yes. When it goes across, the pilot. We've now joined the viaduct project when the deck will be moved 16 metres sideways. You can go round to the corner there. First door on the right, straight in, there's a tea urn with hot water in, and you can make your own. And biscuits. And biscuits. The first operation of the night is to remove a steel section of the, of the deck which will not be required once it's in its new position. The deck is moved using hydraulic jacks and is operated manually. The engineer watches the movement on a computer screen to monitor the activity. It's now moved 300 and they're setting up for the next move.
It's now gone a metre. By the following morning the deck had been moved and traffic was travelling on it again. We join the viaduct for the last major operation which is the bonding together of the two decks to be known as the stitch. This is where a large quantity of concrete is poured in a very short time. With the road deck in its new position, the structure that supported it can now be removed. and we're visiting the project as it nears its completion. We often think of our engineers, history and the works that they carried out in the past. The engineers of railways, bridges and buildings. Today we still have engineers capable of things of the future and this is one such project. May they be justly proud of their achievement.